me Mr.'s voice. Now in this video we're gonna make some ionomer cement. Ionomer cement, unlike your your usual ion exchange membrane, is made by getting some sort of uh, cement mixture made of uh, ordinary Portland cement with either ion exchange resin that's been grounded up in a blender or plaster of Paris. Plaster of Paris will work if you cannot find ion exchange resin. The ion exchange resin can be found at the uh, water purification section of your hardware store. The ratio of ordinary Portland cement to uh, ion exchange resin is usually 3 to 1. Because you can also include the sand just as a filler. But honestly, cement's cheap anyway and this is not meant to be structural. So 3 is to 1. Pretty good. You know, 3 times cement, 1 times the resin. Now, in this case, we'll have these walls. They will be stuck into this so we can divide it for the, uh, you know, for the concrete mixture not to pour to the side. And, and what we need is a stick of butter. The reason why we're using butter is because if we use something like paraffin oil, we, that oil will stay until a very long time and pollute the surface of the cement. Meanwhile, if we use butter, the good part about butter is that it uh, is a triglyceride, so it can react with either soap molecules or sodium hydroxide to essentially remove these. So what you want to do is you just want to grease, you just want to grease this with butter. Just like literally lather it in there like a dirty pig. Exactly like this. And I'm doing this one-handed because tripod's missing. Anyway, you want to do something like this. Once it's all nice and greased, you stick it in here. So when you stick it in here, I've, I've sanded down some ridge lines on the here for the butter, you know, for the gap to be at this particular size. It can be any size. If it's too thin, it will collapse. If it's too thick, well, you're going to run at too, too high of a voltage for the given current because of the resistance. So yeah, you just get your lure pack unsalted butter. You know, you can use salted butter, it doesn't matter, but I just use the unsalted, because why not? You don't want to keep rubbing your butter into your... Of course, you can't eat this anymore, it was just made for this video. <sighs> Maybe one day I'll make a cooking show. Anyway, so we just put this in here, yeah. After we've done this, normally you'd say, Can I pour the concrete mixture now? Well, yes you can, but... I prefer it if you use some silicone glue to secure the sides out in and here. Let that dry for a bit and and then pour your concrete mixture. You don't have to wait for long since you're going to be pulling it out anyway. A good 30 minutes is probably enough to like stop the, the cement from crossing over. So, we have about this much over here, about 450 mil, milliliters. Uh, and uh, normally you'd weigh this. But but just for the sake, since it's rough anyway, and the ion exchange properties won't be that effective, we have a 3 to 1 ratio. So if we assume that their densities are constant, remember guys, do not do this. Weighing it is far better. Because they're both rock. Oh well, let's treat this like civil engineers. They're both rock. So we just have to go to about 562 or just 600 and say fuck it. Yes, so we go up to 600. So we do that, should be the good ratio. We overshoot it, ah oh well, more ion exchange. Yep, fine. There you go, see? Now then, we're going to add water, then we're going to pour this in there. I cannot mix and do all of, well actually, you know what? It's a fucking challenge, let's do it. I'm going to try to hand mix a plaster containing compound. See if I will be able to get it right without it screwing me over. I obviously need more water. Just the fucking smoke smoke coming through. Okay. To mix this until we 
get a good consistency. I have to do this off camera. Anyway guys, you want to mix it till it's about like this. Sort of like a putty. And you want to pour this quickly. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put that down there in a plastic bag. And we're going to pour this. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to miss this. Sorry, I don't have a tripod right now, so I'll do this. Uh, let's try. Well, after me trying to frantically mix something before it turns to stone, we have this guy. It turned to stone. The next thing we need to do is we just need to leave it for... We can leave it for a day because there's butter here anyway. You know, this thing just hardens like quick, you know. It's already a stone. It's already solid. And this kind of stuff's already pretty solid. It's it's hard. Well, that's just how it works, though. So leave this for a while, and uh, next time, or maybe in the morning, it's gonna look pretty hard, and it will be good to finally peel off. So one thing you wanna do, though, is before you do any of that, you see all this stuff sticking here. You wanna cut it down with this guy. Maybe even shave through here if you have a really good one. So just basically cut along the ridge. Just so it's easier to demold the next day. I'll do that and show you another segment. When it looks like this, it's actually ready to demold. But this thing is a very weak structure. If I were to demold it now, there would be cracks. By the way, while I was pouring this, it's also good to shove your stick in there to remove all the air bubbles. That usually really helps. That's another thing you should do. Also, these things are ready to come off. I was, you know, they were pretty much only held on there pretty poorly. I had to push this in a little bit to straighten it out while it was still liquid. Once this starts to totally become solid though, there's nothing you can do. You know, you'd have to start over. So you have to mix it fast. Originally, I used this stick to mix it. But I had to make another batch because I had to then begin to use the uh, just my hand with a glove. To mix it so that I can mix it very quickly and it's still a liquid before I pour it in because the moment this thing starts to solidify it's gonna heat up just like plaster albeit it's a lot slower than plaster with plaster you barely have like 30 seconds to pour it this one you have a solid three minutes but still it can just suddenly wink out on you and, and start hardening without you wanting it to harden if you use ion exchange resin this is not a problem Here's a smaller membrane made the other day, or not two days ago. This one, as you can see, hardened completely. I've also reinforced the sides already with silicone glue so that it, you know, does not leak. That's optional though. It depends on how good your pre sanding skills are. Mines aren't, so I will have to do the same for this. I'll reinforce the sides with silicone glue. But yeah, this thing is ready for running. We use iron exchange resin and, and I use white cement because that's the cheapest they had. I could have used like the gray OPC. I mean it, it just looks a little cleaner with the white cement honestly. But you could use OPC. It will make almost no difference at that point. But yeah, that's it. Okay, so uh, we're ready to demold this thing. So uh, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to take it apart slowly and... Uh, let the layers separate by prying it open carefully. And uh, as you can see, the uh, ion exchange membrane is uh, looking really smooth. And uh, the sides are all uh, nice and uh, molded together, yo. Okay, so about two days later, you know, your, the cell looks perfect. It's hard doesn't come off now we're gonna test the smaller cell you want to do a leak test so you want to fill up one side of the cell and leave the other one empty and there should be no droplets on the other side once you've ensured that there is no leakage you can then pour onto the other side and this essentially starts the process now your membrane electrolysis will be very slow at first Practically right now, there's absolutely no current flowing through just because of how how much solution and all has to still get through here. 
Optionally, you could also do a washing with sodium hydroxide before you start. This will also help. And this will also help it make, be more conductive. Or you could just leave this for approximately a day and eventually stuff will make it through. So this is the very slow process of priming the cell. Or likewise, you could put an acid here and a base here and do the same, but you know, knowing that this is a silicate, it might be a little too violent. Anyway, you just leave this in, and as you can see, there's already current. See? Watch it prime itself. With enough voltage, you can see that the current suddenly starts to rise. and That shows that there is some sort of uh, migration of ions through this... Uh, you know, wall right here. That's because we've doped it with calcium, so that allows for for transmigration of the ions. And then yeah, the current's rising pretty quickly, as you can see now. It's at up to half an amp, and we can start to see bubbles appearing at the cathode. You know, this is a good sign. So eventually, you will eventually get a working cell. Like right now, it's actually friggin' working. Which means that I've done here chloride. So this is producing copper chloride. But you could use anything like perchlorate, chlorate, acetate. You know, if all you have is sodium acetate, I mean, you could. You could even produce sulfates this way. You could produce nitrates this way. Oh, damn, the current's rising very quickly. I wonder if there might just be a leak. Or, maybe this is just as good as it is. I don't know, this is suspicious. I wonder if electroosmosis is up to no good again. Ah, we'll find out later. It'll be easy to tell if something truly went wrong, but overall, the liquid level seems to be staying constant despite all of this. Which suggests that it indeed is working. However, you can see that there's a clouding. That's because the conditions in the uh, anode chamber are basic. So you would have to add a bit of hydrochloric acid to prime it, which I'm going to do right now. I've done a few modifications to this cell. I've added some water cooling because it was over 20 watts of heat being uh, used. The voltage is also dropping, which will also lower the watts, but only up to a certain point. The current is limited to 1.5 amps. I'm bubbling air through this, and there's a very good reason for that. As the concentration of copper 2 chloride increases, the copper metal will begin to react on its own, forming copper 1 chloride in solution and thus forming a precipitate, which will eventually happen. And in the cathode chamber, this is producing a more concentrated solution of sodium hydroxide. However, this thing is very resistant to sodium hydroxide. The, the time you know when the membrane is overloaded is when you start seeing dark spots at the uh, anode chamber indicating that the pH is starting to get high within this membrane. Eventually this will start to permeate deeper and the equilibrium will shift it towards this way as the concentration gradient and pH gradient increase between the two cells. Because the pH gradient of this is staying, it's only going down slightly, it's not, it's, it's still going down, but it will only go as low as the salt that it's making. However, here, this will keep increasing up until, like, you know, because eventually the sodium hydroxide concentration is going to approach, like, 30% in here. Of course, we're going to let it go to our 15%. I mean, we don't know the exact percentages, but the thicker your membrane, the longer it takes or for this equilibrium to shift over here to the point that you have a bit of these hydroxide ions like changing the pH at the interface, creating black spots. However, if you just run your membranes before that point and you keep like removing the solution in the cathode chamber, you will not have such an issue. 